Welcome back, guys. We are in part three of Divinity Original Sin. Let's do this. Bishop Alexander and the Hammer herself. They, they were so close, almost within arm's reach. You don't know them? Oh, remarkable. Bishop Alexander is the son of the Divine, the leader of the Divine Order. And Dallas, the Hammer, is his right hand. Nothing like threats. Great God. Were you quit dragging this on? Ain't that hard, Lexi. Just hand over the gold. I will not. I'm not mad, darling. I'm not mad. Sweetheart. You push you. I want only bread. They are all that stand between you, me, and the void. And they were right here just a moment ago, attending to some business. Oh, I'll not forget this. I wonder if I could get a letter out of this place. Oh, my daughter would love to hear I've seen the great bishop up close. Disgusting like theft. Disgusting like threat. Dear one, help me teach this beast. He must respect. Respect? <laughs> Someone's got to keep this place running. Griff can't do it for free. Why'd you gotta make it so hard? An intense-looking man steps between the thug and the elf and rolls up his sleeves, revealing well-muscled and heavily scarred arms. You recognize him. It's Ifan, who you met aboard the ship on the way here. Just stand aside, won't you, mate? This is no business of yours. Lone wolves decide their own business. The thug freezes in fear for a moment, before shuffling back to the protection of his crony. Pay up, elf. No one shorts Griff, especially not one of you. Everyone in camp's got to contribute. For food, for protection, no exceptions. Especially not for elves. Griff's orders. Food? Protection? I have neither. Runs the kitchen. Means he runs me, you, and everyone else in camp. Burrow looks you both up and down, sizing up your combined threat. Ah, get out of here. The both of you. You ain't worth the sweat of my brow anyhow. The elf smiles and bows to you in thanks. Follow me before more of them trouble us. There is a safe place.
convincing Burrow not to lay down the law on that elf. Your kind stick together like stink on garbage, don't you? I'm sure you would have. Pifan rolls his sleeves back down. He nods at you, the shadow of a smile on his lips. Good work there. Good work. I can tell you've got chops. Say, you were on the ship here with me, weren't you? He stretches out one rough hand to shake yours. He grips your hand tight as a vice and shakes it, hard. Say, you don't look all that busy now that we're safely on dry land. I could use someone to watch my back, and it looks like you could use someone to watch yours. I've just got a small errand to run, and then I'll be looking to get the hell out of here while I've still got a neck to collar. How about we stick together until we get out of this place? Everyone needs to make a living. I make mine running errands. He shoots you a flinty look, all teeth and peril. Lone wolves only share such information with friends. Are we going to be friends? He grins, sharp teeth glittering in the midday sun. So, before we hit the road, it's best if we decide battle strategies up front. Should keep more of our blood in. Survival's my main priority. I'll use every trick in the book to keep us alive. But if a wayfarer is not what you're after, I've got other skills. What do you need? Can do. Onwards. He scans the horizon for threats with one green eye, then nods back at you. Right you are. Lead the way. enough that you travel with me must you speak too go on then bark away let's is that indigestion or is it oh god not now hey i know you no sir the dark-eyed jokes to you met aboard the ship waves enthusiastically and dips into a mock elegant curtsy back then i was <coughs> madame josephine gribbles de pube and you were... you. <laughs> Glad to see you made it. Nothing like a nice tentacle slap across the moor to set the tone for the week, eh? How'd you escape? Me too. Did you hear something? When you were in the water, I mean. I heard the same thing. Do you know what this means? It means I'm not the only. Losa's voice catches in her throat. The joy drains from her face. Her eyes lose focus and her whole body goes rigid. She is stock still, waxy skinned, her eyes dark. Grayish black veins run from her eyes down her cheeks. Her head snaps to you mechanically and her eyes lock with yours, dark pupils dilated into great black voids. Light suddenly flashes back into her face. The grey veins drain to pinkish flesh, and her whole body relaxes. Anyway, what were we talking about? Ah, oh, it's nothing really. It's just... I'm just a bit... well, a bit... 
hospitable. Put it like this. You've never been a host, I bet. That's because you're an infested clump of leaves on the side of the road. That ain't bad, though. I'd give just about anything to be like you. But I'm a, a roadside inn. Red door, flowers out front, friendly lady at the door beckoning you in for half price. Like a god's damn gold star inn for the disembodied. Feels like just one, strangely enough. Big one, though. Don't know its name yet, either. It takes time for them to get comfortable and introduce themselves. So, how are you enjoying the joy? So true. And you can stay as long as your heart desires, free of charge. So, you want to check this place out together? Strength in numbers and all that. Sure, whatever suits you. Probably better for you in the end anyway. I'm not always myself, and sometimes not myself is a bit, uh, unpredictable. Anyway, see you around. Bow your head, please! If we chant the endless prayer, the next divine will ascend, even if your kind has displeased the god so terribly of late. You gonna pray all day, buddy? So do I. By the divine, so do I. If Bishop Alexander doesn't rise, I don't know who will protect us from this darkness. Some blame the Void Woken for Alexander's failure to ascend. If all we sorcerers can be cured, then the bishop shall be free to rise. So chant the endless prayer. I can't hear himself think with all this racket. Day and night she hollers after that child. Where is he? Irma? Irma? Hear that, Farah? You gotta cut that out. What's happened to you? He hasn't changed a bit. Known her all my life. Her little girl Irma, too. Farah was a straight shooting woman in those days. But now she's madder and a cuckoo and twice as loud. What else do you call hollering after a ghost? That child of hers she's shouting after has been dead and buried a month over. Killed by a void woken back in our own village. Never even stepped foot in Fort Joy. And there ain't no amount of hollering that'll bring her back. If I find out you've gone near my baby, I'll skin you alive. Come on, old man. I can't wait all day.
I told him at noon exactly. Good day. Irma, Irma dear, where are you, sweetheart? Please, please, you must help me. No one here will help me. Not one of these bastards. A child is missing. My baby. Oh, bless you, bless you. She's been missing for days now, and not a single soul will help me look for her. Irma's her name. She's about as high as your hip. Black of hair, a quiet child. Not prone to wandering off. I'm sick with worry. Completely sick. And no one in this damn camp will lift a finger to help me find her. I last saw her just here, near three days ago. She was playing with her little doll, and I was washing out her tunic. I turned from her for one moment, and she was gone. Left her doll behind, too. It's so unlike her. This place turns people cold, cold and wicked. That fellow Jeff over there speaks unutterable evil, but I can't move away from him. What if Irma comes back and I'm not here? Yes, of course. Here, you should take it with you. When you find her, give her the doll and tell her, Mummy says this is for her little chicken, and it's time to come home. She soaks up a steady stream of tears with her shirt sleeve. She ought to come with you then. She ought to follow you back to me. You are an angel. Truly you are. Think I ain't watching. That's your fifth blue just of this round. What of it? Where? Yeah, is what of it? Our father. Ah, crabby, you gobblers. Come on, see ya. I like the gang. No, no. It's just a pair of yellow filthy jeans. I can't beat ya. A little respect for Griggs. Where is he? Noon exactly, didn't I? You there, lizard? I'm looking for an inmate, a smallish man, thick spectacles, prone to somewhat eccentric chatter. He wears a large bronze pendant with a dragon stamped into it. Have you seen him? None of your business, inmate. Find me if you hear of a me go. Otherwise, don't waste my time. A fresh face. We love fresh faces, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. Why don't you join us in a round of cards? First hands on the house. No problem, Freshy. In that case, enjoy your stay. But I'll be needing to collect your interment fee first, of course. 
I'm sure the Reds told you. No one gets along without paying the internment fee. So, let's make this easy. Empty your pockets. Well, you've heard of it now, ain't ya? Go on, then, Freshy. Turn them out. <coughs> We'll see about that, Freshy. Our Father, who presideth over us all. Father, who presideth over us all. Send us your children, your supplicants. Oh. 
Our father, who provided... Send us your children. Lest the void overtake and devour us all. Our Father, who presideth over us all. Lest the void overtake and devour us all. Greetings, child. You must be very far from your homelands indeed. Hurts to be so far from your loved ones, eh? I know the feeling. Troubles me to hear that. Now that the divine has gone, our world's duller, darker than ever before. When he comes back, he'll bring a gentler world with him. Lest the void overtake and devour. Go well, my child. Perhaps the Divine will return to us yet. Perhaps he'll come home in time. Lest the void overtake and devour us all. Our Father, who presideth over us all. Our Father, who presideth over us all. Lest the void overtake and devour us all. Our Father, who presideth over us all. Send us your children, your supplicants, a new divine.
The woman is scrabbling at her throat, as though she can hardly breathe. As she catches sight of you, recognition flashes in her terrified eyes. She drops her hands from her throat and starts hyperventilating. Ben! Ben Mest! Ivan! Ben Mest! You killed them! You killed them! He killed them all! Murderer! You can't hide who you are, killer. Look! Look at him! It's him! It's the Silver Claw himself! <laughs> if I'm been missed! is scrabbling at her throat, as though she can hardly breathe. Don't touch me! You're too close. This collar, this place, it's squeezing the life from me. Do you? You seem fine. Don't you feel how tight this collar is? And there's nothing we can do. Nothing we can do. Her hands move again to her throat. She seems to try to make space between her neck and the collar, but there's no space to be made. It's getting tighter. I can... I can hardly breathe. just arrived, isn't that right? Are you... Are you quite alone? It's just... I've a proposition. Something... Something very worth knowing. But it's hardly a group affair. I only need one. Noble, but after the magisters take you all, your nobility will have been for nothing. Good luck with your friends, though. Enjoy your last days in good company, won't you?
Here come to shake me down for my knickers, have you? They're all I got left after your buddies were through with me. I'm a friend. I've grown quite attached to him over the years. Well, almost literally in this filthy place. The lizard's brow knits together, then apart, and back again. He seems to be swimming deep in his thoughts and doesn't look up as you approach. Hmm? What? Oh, new, are you? Very good, very good. Make yourself at home. Advice? Hmm. Hold on to yourself, my friend. The fort is full of decent folks turned savage by confinement. Do not let it happen to you. Hmm? Goods. Ah, yes. Yes, of course. Have a look. Bottles of mead, oh, a thousand bottles of dust, fifty bottles of tears, oh, make the hinges rust. My mind? What else, my friend? I'm wondering why all of this. Source, the Void Woken, the Divine. Why? Naturally. How could one not? We've used Source for thousands of years. We have used it to heal, to grow. How can it be that it suddenly summons these, these horrors from the Void? And when will Alexander ascend to divinity? We cannot continue like this. Come, old chap. Don't be unreasonable. Please, excuse us. You're talking to me, not her, Sam. Oh, for the love of Lucian, Balladeer. You're acting like a madman. Say it again. What you said about my wife. Go on. Piss off. Go on, Sam. Well, it's the truth, and you know it. She's better off. So what if it was messy? I'd rather puke myself to death a thousand times than let the Reds get to me. If she were my wife, I'd be happy for her. A flat smile twitches across Balladeer's lips. She never did like you. <laughs> Wouldn't know a thing about you and I, Gretty. The man looks for a moment at the corpse at his feet, then turns back toward the nearly finished coffin, bloodied hammer in hand. Don't feel too bad. Fella had no decency. If you don't have that, you don't have anything to live for. He nods at you and turns back to his handiwork. He lines up another nail and hammers it into the panel.
wouldn't know a thing about you and I, Gritty. Didn't I? Red, they said. Red then dead. Them that pay the bills, of course. I'll be a rich man when you're six feet under. Time's up, Your Highness. Let's dance.
I need aid. Their frightful manners I mind the most, really. That was rather fun, wasn't it? I do find it ever so invigorating to cut a cutthroat's throat. Now, oh, let's not succumb to melodrama, shall we? This kind of gutter vermin can hardly be said to be dangerous. Besides, one gets used to this kind of thing so quickly. This is hardly the first time someone's filled some poor fool's purse and bid him kill the prince. I'll tell you what, though. Whomever wants me out of the picture will have to do a lot better if they seek to get the better of me. All those bumblers they've sent so far mark a mere insult to my swordsmanship.
The woman looks out on the gently lapping waves. She seems totally at peace, but as you approach, she turns to you with a cheerful smile. I haven't seen you around here before. New? Well, don't worry too much if you have a hard time settling in. Takes a while to get used to the place. You here alone? She gives you a long look. You keep them friends of yours close, eh? Some of us haven't got anyone at all anymore. Not much in this world someone you love can't make better. Used to be I had a family. A husband and a little boy. We were healers. Source was in our blood. Then they brought us here. I couldn't stop them from taking my boys from me when they did. Reckon they were cured. Maybe even released. Don't know why the Reds didn't take me, too. Now I'm just waiting for him to call my name. Waiting and remembering. Thank you kindly, sweetheart. I do appreciate it. They were good lads. Too good for this place. In some ways, I'm glad they got out quickly. Listen to me, bubbling on like a cauldron. You're sweet to listen. And yes, they were lovely. Totally lovely. I'll see him again before I'm gone for good. That's for certain. You run along now, darling. You shouldn't spend what little time you've got left here listening to an old bleeding heart moan.
Okay. Bam. Here you are. I wonder what keeps you. Tell me your tale. We are unfamiliar yet familiar. We are the same material, you agree? I am very curious. So tell me, tell me your tale. Start from the beginning. Start from where you come. Thanks guys for watching part 3 of Divinity Original Sin.